Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar over the 2018 Drawing Editor Enhancements. My name is Carrie Krause, and I will be covering the new enhancements to Drawing Editor. Feel free to type in your questions during the webinar, and I will answer them at the end. All right, we will start with the option to show all field welds on the erection views. So 2018 has a feature while detailing erection views to include the field weld symbols on the drawing. So if we detail an erection view, I'm going to focus on C here, and we go to the settings, I'm going to detail it in wire. This new option can be found under the annotations tab. So under annotations, it's so located in the bottom right hand corner. You have the option to show the field welds. Below that, you have the option to show field weld links. We'll come back to that here in a moment. So I'm going to go ahead and detail this one view with the field welds turned on. We'll say OK. Open that erection view here, view C. And we can see that the field welds are on the erection view. The other option is to include the field weld lengths. Now, if we wanted to modify just this one erection view to show the lengths, and I'm already inside of the drawing here. So if I bring up the drawing data on this erection view, the erection view detailing settings are stored right here within the drawing data. So if the next time that I detail this erection view, I want the field weld lengths to be included, I can turn that on right now while I'm inside of this particular erection view. So if I click on the show field welds, this is instead of going to the settings when I select the view and detail it, this will be stored with this view now. So show field weld links. So if I say OK and OK, that is now saved with my erection view C. So if I go to my detail erection views again here and I click on C, we're going to go into settings just to see that it did remember that I do want to show field weld lengths with this particular view. Okay, so instead of coming in and clicking the settings when you detail, I just went into the drawing data on that particular view and saved it within there. So it is stored within there. So I'll select C, redetail it here. We'll bring that view back up. And the links are now included with those field welds, with the links. Okay, so now let's take a look at a plan view detail. So if we go to detail erection views, we'll detail our 114 foot six here. Go to the settings. I'm going to detail it in wire. We have the annotations here. Bottom right hand corner, we'll click on the field welds. Say OK and OK. Now, if we open that view, we'll see that the field welds are now included on that erection view. Another application for this would be if you wanted to show a detailed framing condition. So if you had your vertical brace with the weld and you didn't want to show like the section view that we just looked at there, you could use your save area and save an erection view of the particular framing condition. So here I just have a vertical brace weld. If we go into settings, Annotations, you can click on show field welds, show field weld links. So we'll go ahead and say OK and detail that. So now if we open that vertical brace weld, 
we see that it is one framing condition. So if I wanted to just look at this top location up here, we'll see that we could come in and add this to an erection view uh, as its own viewport. Okay. Next, there is now an option to preserve user modified bill of material changes or additions. So if I added a beam here, in previous versions, the bill of material was always reset when a member was redetailed. This option allows the information to not be reset upon redetailing. We'll start by looking at our options pull down. We go to our user options. We'll find under the colors tab. We now have two colors listed in bill of material editor section down here in the bottom right hand corner. There are colors for the preserved and unpreserved fields in the bill of material. This is a user preference, so each user can have their own preferred colors. We do suggest that you do not use white for either color option since that would not show the difference between system field and a modified field. Okay, so a preserved color by default here is going to be this light blue. Unpreserved is going to be this yellow. Okay, so for a field to be changed to user modified, you must manually edit the value or information in the field and make a change to it from what the system has provided. Or you can also select the field that you want and preserve it using the preserve cell option. Okay, so in this particular case here, what we're going to do is we're going to add in our own line. User additions to the bill of material are automatically added as user modified. So if I click on add line, I'm going to notice that it turns that light blue color. That is a preserved cell. Okay, so we're going to add a line here. Let's say we want a quantity of six and we want half inch diameter. Hilti bolts, the length of three, and these will be quick bolts, TZ. Okay, so we've added that. This field here, this whole line is preserved. So if I click OK, and let's say I want to read detail this member. There's also an option in your member annotation and dimensioning that is preserve user modified bill of material. So you can set this defaults in your detailing annotation dimensioning defaults or adjust and save this to the details saved detail settings for a specific member. It is also on there for members and group members. And please note that by default that this option is turned on. Okay, so if I redetail this piece here and I go back to the bill of material, that line is still there. If you do not want to preserve that line, so if I wanted this to be cleared out and I no longer need that line that calls out the Hilti bolts, I could redetail and not preserve user modified bill of material. So I would uncheck the preserve user modified BOM and it gets rid of that line. Okay, to preserve a field, I could click inside of the field, make sure that the blinking cursor there is in that field. I need to move my mouse outside of that field then I can right click and say preserve cell. So then when I click outside of that cell, we see that it is now blue and it will not be modified when redetailed. 
to undo that, I could click inside of this field. Once again, move my mouse away from that cell, right click and say, do not preserve cell. And then when I redetail that, that color will disappear because it will be updated from the model. And we'll look at another example of that here. So on this beam, we have a bent plate. Let's say that we need to get this detail out to the shop. The bent plate is going to be 25 foot six. So I'm gonna click inside of the bent plate length here. And just to get it out to the shop, I'm gonna go 25 foot six. When I click outside of that field, since I have made a user change to that cell, it is automatically set to preserve. So now if I go to redetail, this length will still reflect the 25 foot six. So let's say we get this member out to the shop and now we need to redetail. Let's make sure that this cell gets updated to reflect the model. So I'd click inside of that cell. I'd move my mouse to another cell right click and say do not preserve cell. So now it turns to a yellow color here because it is a non-preserved cell. And if I click OK, I'm going to go ahead and re-detail. And it is OK to have the preserve user modified bill of material checked on because I do not have anything preserved. So if I click OK, we go back to the bill of material, you'll see that it now has 25 foot zero and it is now updated to reflect the model once again. Okay, so that is the user modified bill of material. Next, we're gonna move on to layer colors. 2018 has the ability to provide a color to all items on a layer and drawing editor. These layer colors can be included in the output of PDFs for coloring specific layers for reviewing, checking, or any other application. Settings for this can be found in our fabricator options. So if we go options, fabricator options, I'm gonna go down to drawing cosmetics and it's located on the far right hand side under the colors tab. So you can change the color in here or you can change it per member or detail. Okay, so if we go into our layer edit all, you have the option to change the color right here in the center of the checkboxes. So let's say that we wanted our user annotation to be an orange. And note that the color is not checked on. I'm gonna say okay. And we'll add a label here. We'll go user. Go ahead and place that and it's going to hold the pen color of a label. If we go back to the layer edit all, my user annotation is set to orange, but it is not checked on to show the color. So if I check on to show the color, say okay, we see that that user annotation label now reflects that layer color. Okay, if we go back into the layer colors here, you will see that we have incorporated a user adjusted layer to show changes that were made by the detailer from the original detail to where the detail is interpreted differently. This particular option is still being improved on at the moment. Okay, so by default, the option to show the layer colors in the output to PDFs and in Drawing Editor 
is checked on in the user options. So we can find this under our options, user options, and it is located under the highlighting tab. There are the bottom checkboxes here. We have show layer colors in drawing editor and show layer colors on PDFs. This will not affect the pen line weight when plotting. It only changes the color. Okay. Next, we're going to look at the shield, the trim and extend here. Let's go ahead and go to the next drawing. So we have a handful of items over here. Arcs, circles, and ellipses now have the ability to be trimmed. Circles and ellipse, when trimmed, will become editable arcs. To trim an arc, circle, or ellipse, there must be a line, arc, circle, or ellipse intersecting. Arcs will require one point of intersection, while circles and ellipses will require two points of intersection. Okay. So if we just take a look at some of this trimming here, so we have an ellipse here and we have a line that has two intersecting points. So I can do a trim. So I select the line and the ellipse, right click and OK. And it's going to ask me which segments I want to trim. So if I wanted to trim this ellipse part here, I would click on that segment and then I'm going to right click to return. So that went from an ellipse to an arc. So if I double click on that object now, we see that it is now an arc edit instead of an ellipse edit. Okay, same goes for lines. If I wanted to trim a line, we'll go ahead and select these two points here and we will trim and I can trim off each end of that line. Okay, same with circles here. I have two intersecting points on this circle, so I'll be able to select them, and we're going to trim, and we'll just trim this inside portion here. It's going to go from a circle to an arc. Okay, same goes with this line down here. If I trim these two, I can trim off the bottom portion of that circle and the sides of this line. This is now an arc instead of a circle. Okay, a couple other things here. If we do the extend, extend allows you to move in a positive or a negative direction. So if I wanted this line to come back to this line, I could use my extend, select the line to extend to, select the line to be extended, okay? And it will extend that in a negative. So it, it's not extending it in a positive direction, it's coming back and actually trimming that. Okay, so you can trim and extend multiple lines or one line at a time. So if we wanted to extend these three, we could extend them all at the same time. Same goes for the trim. If we wanted to trim all these at the same time, we could select the three to trim. Extending has now been open to arcs as well. So I have an arc down here. The line, arc, circle, or ellipse that the arc will be extended to will be selected first and then the arc. So if we go to extend, select the line, select the arc, right click and OK, and note the button bindings up here. So your left click is going to be clockwise extension and your right click is going to be 
counterclockwise extension. So if I right click here, it's going to counterclockwise extend to that line. Okay, 2018 has added new ways of adding arc circles and added the ability to add ellipses. With the addition of the arcs and circle add commands, there are also two new user options that we'll take a look at. Okay, and to do this here, I'm going to open up B100. For this example, I have used the material drafting within Drawing Editor to be able to add in material to create a user-created detail. I'm going to use circles, arcs, and trim to add in a cope and a web penetration here. So if we look at this upper left hand, we're going to go ahead and do a, a cope. So looking at our objects pull down, we go to circles. We have the option to add radius. To use this tool, first locate the center of the circle. And then the second point will be the radius. So if I select the second point, that is the radius of the circle. And then the circle setup pops up here. Radius is one half. You can change your line type, pen color, attach to view, layer, and fill. Go ahead and say OK. Right click to return. Now with this, I want to bring this line back, these lines back, and then trim up the, the corner here. So I'm going to use the extend. So I'm going to extend to this line from this line. Okay, so we see that the extend is working in a negative direction. So it's actually taking away that portion. Okay, same goes for these two over here. That extends it back. So now we're going to trim up these lines here. Okay, so I'll go ahead and select this section here. And we're going to go to trim. We'll go ahead and trim off this portion of the circle, this portion of the line, and this portion of the line. Right click to return to give us that radius cut in there. So I added this as a circle, but since I have used the trim command, if I edit, I now see that it has been turned into an arc. Okay, some other ways of inputting circles. You have the add diameter. Okay, so just to take a look at that here. Objects, circles, add diameter. So you, your first point will be the center. The second point will be the radius. The difference is the diameter will be set using a type dimension during the second point locate. So you could actually type that in there. The next way to input a circle now is the add two point. So two points selected will set the diameter of the circle. Another way to add in now is add tangent tangent radius. Okay, to use this, you locate the two lines or circles. The new circle would be tangent two. Okay, so if I say add tangent tangent radius and I want to use this line, and this bottom line here. So then it brings up the circle edit window and you specified the radius or diameter. Go ahead, half inch radius, okay. And it adds in that circle tangent to the two lines that I selected. Note that the edit window appears every time I add in a circle, even though we are using new commands that do not need the edit window for. So when we use the 
command circle add radius add diameter or add two points we don't really need that circle edit window to come up every single time so to control that we're going to go to the user options and in the user options we're going to go to the interface tab and down at the bottom here we have always show arc edit window and always show circle edit window these are on by default so if you do not want that window to pop up every single time you would want to turn that off in here Okay, so now we'll move on to the new ways of adding the arcs. If you go to objects, arcs, you have your add, you have add center start end. To use this one, you will add the center and then the start and the end point. And once again, that arc edit comes up. I don't necessarily need to see this every time, so you could go back into your user options and turn that option off. Go ahead and say OK. Right click to return. Another way to add in an arc is the add center start angle. So you'll first locate the center. Then you can locate the start, and then you can put in an angle. So here, if I wanted to use my typed angle, I could use the at symbol, and then type in that I want it at 90 degrees. Okay. The other ways to add arcs, are going to be add continuous. This is going to continue off of the last arc added. So you would locate the first point at the start, second point at the end, and third point would locate the center. And once you say OK to the arc edit window, the command will continue to run to add more arcs continuously. The other option here is the add three point tool so you locate the first point at the start second point along the arc and the third point at the end so those are the new ways of adding in circles and arcs now if i wanted to use my trim command i could select everything here right click and OK and just go along and select what I do not want. Okay, so select what we are trimming away. Okay, so we see that these circles are now arcs and the arcs remain arcs. And now to look at the ellipses, there's three different ways to add in an ellipse. The first ones are going to be located under circles. You have add ellipse center. Using this, the first point is going to be at the center of the ellipse. Okay, so if I select the point, it's at the center. The second point will locate the major axis radius. And the third point will locate the minor axis radius. Okay, and then it will bring up the ellipse edit. And here you can modify that major axis radius, the minor axis radius, the rotation of the major axis, and then your line type, pen color, view, layer, and fill. Okay, the next way to add an ellipse is also found under objects, circles, and it is add ellipse axis end. 
To use this, the first two points selected will set the major axis. Point three will set the minor. So instead of locating the center, we're locating the two edges. And then the third point sets the minor. Once again, you have control over uh, the radiuses after and the rotation. And the third way to add in an ellipse is the ellipse arc. To use this, you're going to go to your objects, arcs, and then the add ellipse. The first two points selected will set the major axis diameter. Okay, so we'll select two points for the major axis diameter. Point three will set the minor axis radius. Points four sets the start of the arc. Point five sets the end of the arc. So if we wanted to start the arc here and end it over here. Okay, so now it is an arc. You can control the radius, the included angle, the X rotation, Z rotation, line type, pen color, view, and layer. So those are the three new ways to add the ellipse. Next, we're going to look at the scale dimensioning symbols. Okay, so we'll go ahead and just look at a detail here. The option that we're going to look at here is going to be found in our fabricator options under drawing cosmetics. So the scale dimensioning symbol option allows for more control over the size of dimension terminals. This includes the slash marks and the arrowheads, the size of the pointer arrowhead and the work point symbols. So right here inside of the drawing cosmetics, that's going to be found under the sizes tab. And then down here at the bottom, it does say size of dimension terminal, but this is really a scale of the dimension terminal arrowhead and work point symbols. This must be set prior to detailing. This option controls the scale and it is a global change. It will apply to member details, submaterial details, and erection view details. Okay, so back here we have that scale set to one. Let's make a extreme change here. We'll go ahead and change it to a scale of three. We'll say okay. So here's one B1. Let's go ahead and re-detail that with that new change. Okay, so we see that that has now been updated. Okay, and if we wanted to bring it down, maybe we wanted to scale it down to two instead. Once again, fabricator options, drawing cosmetics, and the dimension terminals. Let's go ahead and bump it down to two. Redetail it. Okay, so a little bit smaller. This option can be set and set up, but it can also be changed per element within your drawing editor. So if I double click on one of my dimensions here, down at the bottom, I'm going to find the size of dimension terminal. Okay, so if I wanted this one to be bumped back down to one, I could change that to one. You could also go lower than a one scale. We could bump it down to a half inch. So if I take this one and I bump it down to a half, it bumps it down to the half inch scale. Okay, same goes for your erection views. So if we go to our erection views, look at 114 here. 
we can double click to edit and you can change your size of dimension terminals. Next we have the save as, rename, and delete within your dialogues here. You can find the save as, rename, and delete in the drawing editor and in the modeling. This allows for more control and easier access to these commands without having to exit the drawing editor or modeling and open up your utility functions. So if we go to our open here, right now we're in drawing editor, so if we click on open, you will see here in the upper right hand corner, there's a new save as, rename, and delete option. So the save as option will bring up a secondary window that will prompt for the new name. So if we were in details, that save as would be active. The rename option will bring up a secondary window that will list the original name and the new name. And the delete option will bring up a secondary window that will give a warning to confirm that the item does need to be deleted. So in here, if we go to, let's say our erection views, and right now I have a view called 99-2, and let's say I wanted to rename it. I could rename it right here within this window. I could click on the rename in the upper right hand corner. And let's say I wanted to change this one to a B plan. Say OK. We see that that has been applied automatically here. And we will go into our modeling to see that it is reflected within modeling as well. So there is my A B plan within modeling. I could also rename it again here if I'd like, or I could delete it. Using the rename with details is going to work the same as using change marks, as long as the piece mark is a system piece mark. Use caution when using the delete feature to delete erection views. This option does act the same as opening your utility functions and deleting a view that way with the result being that the view is deleted both from the drawing editor and it is also deleted out of the model as well. So if I go back to my erection views and my AB plan here, if I click delete, it will bring up a secondary window right here that says warning, you're about to delete the AB plan. Do you wish to continue? If I click yes, it is gone out of my drawing editor and it is gone out of my model. So if I open up modeling, I no longer have either the 99.2 or the AB plan. All right, that concludes today's webinar.